Hello, it's Jeffrey with Real Nifty Vintage and today I'm here with another haul video. I've got things that I picked up on the last two videos we went to with Barb. I went to an estate sale and to Goodwill, another thrift store. But the majority of what I'm gonna show you today here was picked up from the um, estate sale that was pretty cool. I mean, we did driveaways and there wasn't a ton of stuff in the house. So what I, what I got, I, I really wasn't planning on getting it until I was in the house and I had a chance to look around. But um, there was not very many people there, which was, I was so glad about that because it tends to be that you have like a tiny house and then 30, 40 people uh, pillaging over each other and it's, it becomes a mess. But I was able to get some pretty cool things from this estate sale with Barb. And she did, Barb did get one item for herself at that estate sale. Uh, it was a piece of Van Briggle, which was her first piece of Van Briggle. Um, I sold very early on, on uh, in 2016, it was one of the very first things I sold. I had a Van Briggle vase, it was black, very, retro looking how to handle i'll try to find a photo of it and insert it but um i sold that was one of my very first pieces that i sold on etsy um so let me jump in with oh and there before i say anymore there was one casualty one thing i did show in the haul in the video the shop along video that i did not end up getting and that was just purely a mistake so there was a wonderful i'm so mad because it was like it was a pink scale super cool and i i loved it so much but somehow or another they did not put it in my box or she as i was checking out they didn't like know it was mine and i wasn't paying attention i was looking at the paintings with this like loop with this other guy and he was like trying to help me make sure that it was really painted i knew it was painted but then i was trying to figure out how to use the loop and i was like it doesn't work and he's like well you gotta know how to use it so i still don't know how to use a jeweler's loop but um luckily uh, my eyesight's still good enough that i don't need one yet so let me show you i got a couple paintings in the basement now they're kind of on the smaller side but they're framed too which is really nice with little plaques on them that tell you the signature it's marked on the painting but it's also on the plaque so this one here is by g bardi b-a-r-d-i and it's of these like little fishing boats so i've looked this painting up i'll put it up close so this one you can find online, or I did at least, and it's painted slightly different, of course, because it's not a print, this is painted. What does change is the frame. So in this case, we've got this sort of like 1960s sort of frame, maybe a little earlier, and you can really tell that from the starburst pattern on the back, and then the coloring's a little, you know, yellowed. Um, but it was professionally framed at some point, and the ones I found online have different frames. So I'm not sure where this would have been sold or how they would have gotten it originally, but it seems like everyone just has it framed differently. So it wasn't, at least to my, what I think, that it's not like this was sold at big lots of, you know, yesteryear. So I don't know where the paintings came from or how they would have been found if they, I don't know. But I've got this one here, I pay $10. And then the other one, which was hanging right next to it, is G, also G, Volpi, V-O-L-P-I. Now this one is one that I can hardly find anything on, either good or bad, but it's another um, landscape scene. Same frame. So these were framed along at the same point in time, and also $10. So the reason I decided to buy them was I looked up real quick this one here, the G Bardi. And that one was coming up with some pretty good solds on Worth Point, which I have a subscription for that. And if you're curious on Worth Point, I have a whole video on it, but you can do a, a free trial if you click the link below. I'll put that in the description. Um, and then afterwards you pay monthly. But uh, yeah, so I looked this one up and it looked like it was doing pretty good depending on the size of some of this guy's works. So I just took a chance at $10. I'm, I think I'm gonna sell this for about 50 or $60 with shipping included for just this one here. And this other one, I'm still not sure. Maybe it's gonna be a little less uh, because it is more generic. It's of like the, you know, just the scene. The other one has like the whole fishing thing going for it too. This one, I'm probably gonna go for maybe 30 or 40 with shipping included. So the other one 50 60 this one 30 or 40. okay now the funny story when I, I already told the story but barb was looking uh for this picture this painting 
um, that she had that she had saw on the app. It's called EstateSales.net. If you're ever wanting to like know about estate sales in your area, that's an app that you can use. EstateSales.net. It's also a website. You could use the website. But um, she, I didn't know this ahead of time, of course. Otherwise, I would have pulled it for her, or we could have discussed the price. But um, I'm like a tornado, I think, at these estate sales, and I just run through and I pick things out really quickly, even with the camera. Um, but one thing I have been doing, little side note, I've been not recording immediately when I get in there just so that I can go see and get the things that I really want to get to. This painting was one of those quick things. It was hanging on the wall and I snatched it up. So it's like blue, really blue. You can see. It was beautiful. And the frame, this frame is awesome. I'll show you that up close. It's all carved. Gold gilded, carved wood. We've got the mitered corners. But I love that detailing. So what's interesting about this one, I mean, it is signed, it is a painting, and it is does have glass on it, uh, which, you know, I don't know what the glass thing is for. You don't technically need glass to, to uh, go set in front of a painting. But what I've researched and looked up is it, there's not really conclusive evidence either way on how glass affects paintings. But this one is on a board. It's on an actual hard board, not canvas. And also, it is marked on the bottom, the back here, Abbott's, right here, um, and I can't read backwards now, Abbott's Academy Board. So it's one of these types of things, I guess, you could have went in uh, to like an art store and bought the board and then painted it. But what I'm actually still unsure of was, the, is, was this part of an academic setting, setting? Did you actually go to an art school and was or were you provided this board, or could you have got could any of can could anybody have gotten this board at a store? So I don't know if it was part of some sort of learning thing or or what. But um, and the other thing about that aspect is I of course don't expect it to be valuable by like the name or anything. I really was attracted to it because of the colors and how pretty it was. Um, it has a nice reflective quality to it with the way the tree and everything is and just all the blues and it's a very calming picture plus you've got the nice frame uh, so that that's what drew me to it but the name I cannot read and it's I'll try to insert a close-up of the name if anybody has any ideas but I, I doubt it makes a huge difference and the other thing to think about on this one with which I think is kind of cool is the age so the frame is sort of the frame and the artboard the back label there sort of makes me think that it's from like the late 1800s uh probably no later than 1915 though and it um the frame itself kind of points that direction too so all in all i really like it for those specific reasons um and i paid 20 dollars for it i'm still not sure if i want to go about selling it or how much i want to sell it for on etsy um things like this with the glass freak me out a little bit online because of the shipping uh, I have dabbled a little bit in shipping pictures and things online, but it's not my it's not my favorite thing to do. So, actually, a good tip of something that size. It's not terribly large, but the USPS gives out 12 by 12 by 8 shipping boxes. Now, obviously, that size will not fit that, but they ship those boxes in a larger, I think, 24 by 5 by 18 or something uh, box. So it's a nice size box. Uh, when you buy 25 i think when you buy 20 or when you get 25 boxes from them on their website they'll ship them all in one bigger large box that would be perfect for something like that so technically i think i could ship it pretty easily with good filler which are anyways um i'm gonna put that off to the side and give it some thought about how i want to deal with the pricing on that one um the next thing i want to show are these really cool flatware pieces and they have the wonderful crown kind of motif on there very different looking so i decided to buy them they are actually marked on the back with everything i just love that when it happens it is marked national stainless edgemont japan so um the style is called edgemont it's stainless steel and i looked those up on worth point on um replacements.com actually and uh Obviously, everything on replacements is super high uh, when you compare it to eBay. But um, 
what I think I'm gonna do with this is I have actually, a tw if, you, if I wanna round it off nicely, a 24 piece set that's eight forks, eight spoons, and eight butter and eight knives. So um, I have that, and um, I like to price flatware like this at about a dollar and a half to two dollars each, uh, times the quantity. So I think I'm gonna, um, with shipping included, I think I'm gonna sell these for right around sixty dollars on Etsy. So that's the total package price with that. And what I'm looking at down here, I've got this big thing of them. Uh, most of that is the pattern, but there's also some little odds and ends things that I might not be able to use. There's like a melon baller or something. Yeah, I mean, stuff like this, you would think that it would sell in the booth, but they really don't, uh, even though it does look like it has, has some age to it, 1930s or so. Yeah. What is that? I don't know. What does that say? Echo Stainless. You know, another little peeler or something, maybe a potato or something. Um, so that's what those are. Let me switch gears a little bit. So Barb and I, and then I'll got to have a couple other things from the estate sale. So Barb and I also went to Goodwill and we found a couple little things. This is one of them right there. It's hand painted, really pretty. And it is marked on the bottom, Bavaria. So that's pretty good. Um, and it is marked Z and Z period, S period, and co. So I should be able to figure that out. I have not looked it up, but it's really cool. Nice little bowl. Probably stick that online for about $20, just based on how cool it is. Um, the other thing that I bought at Goodwill was this neat little goodies cookie jar. Really think that's spectacular. Has the lid, I'll take that off so I can show you this. And it does say right there, goodies. Now, this would have originally been painted I think orange. I have looked this up online and I found um, other examples of it with all the paint, all the things that were supposed to be painted, painted, as far as I can tell. But this, of course, was orange at one time. Orange. In the back, I think this one was supposed to be orange too. Uh, the lid looks in even a little bit better shape with the coloring. I was thinking about leaving it as is, but I'm sort of tempted now and I've got some acrylic paint of just getting a little brush and dabbing it on there. If I don't like the way it looks, I can just wipe it back off. And it's of course not permanent either way. It's cold painted on there just like the original. But um, yeah, I'm sort of thinking about it now as like a little side project. I paid 25% uh, off of $6. And it's just a nice little basket weave, or no, it's a honey pot. Honey pot goodie jar with bees on it. Really pretty. So I'll probably, once I'm done with it and everything, probably sell it for about between $30 and $40 with shipping included on that one. Stella, come here. People are asking about you. Come here, Stella. There we go. Oh, Stella. Everyone always wonders how you're doing. Yes. You could sit here with a haul. Oh, boy. Are you ready to talk about the next thing, Stella? Okay, now we've got this really wonderful, this is back to the estate sale. So we've got this wonderful Art Nouveau Victorian photo album right here. I paid $15 for this and I do have a story on it and I almost was not able to get it. I mean, so here's what happened. I walked over to the room that that was in. It was sitting on a table and somebody was holding it. I was like, darn it, I wish I could have at least seen how much they had a price on it. And I just walked back and looked in another room. Then on my way out of that room, I looked back into the same room and then there was another person, totally different person holding the same thing. I'm like, oh, so they just set it back down and now this other lady has it. I'm like, darn, I could have got it again. I walk in there, I was like, well here, maybe she'll put it down too. You know, if one person put it down, maybe the price is wrong or something. So I was, I walked into the room and that person decided to set it down and walk around and look at something else. So I went on in there and I picked it up, turned it around, $15, and it's just really pretty. I love the blue on here and look at all the nice embossed color. I mean, it's in really, really nice shape. There are no photos in there. So that's one thing that people like, but um, there's no photos, but on the back page, looks like uh, they, they remind me of Valentine's cards or something. See here? 
there's like these little things. I looked at the back of them. There's nothing written on the back of them. So I don't know, they're just kind of small. And then, so there's those three. And then there is this right here. There's that, really cool. And then if you go a little bit further to the front, there are a couple cards there, just two of these, like little cards. So those are fun graphics. Uh, that's the extent of the stuff in this. So yeah, um, like that's part of the thing that kind of broke off, but it's still there. You could tape it on or something. Um, the rest of it looks in pretty good shape. I mean, considering it's like 120 years old, <laughs> but it's beautiful. Uh, the cover is what I was so excited to see. I do no notice that the clasp is missing on there. We've got the metal piece here, but um, and, I mean, it looks in pretty nice shape. So yeah, that was, that was cool enough. But then, okay, I'm back. The battery has been like, or not the battery, but like the recording time has been like cutting off randomly. Um, but it was setting on this wonderful easel here. Now the easel doesn't have much age to it. Um, I had my suspicions to that, but I double checked it with Scott from the old curiosity shop because my thing, I'm not a big expert in wood items. I'm not sure just how to look at them and know the age. I had my ideas that this was probably from like the last 20 years, but it, it, I think it's made to look like mahogany and it, it's right around that same age and style. Uh, not age, but the, the way that it is. Really pretty with the flourishes. And, um, but it's like a picture picture frame or like a book easel. Really cool. Um, I paid $5 for this. I just bought it because I thought it was different and unique. And I don't usually see stuff like that. So for the style alone, I thought $5 was easy to do. Um, I'm not sure if I want to put that one on eBay or not. Uh, because of the size of it. But uh, if I did put it on eBay, it'd probably go for around 30 or $40. I say eBay because it's, I don't think it's vintage enough to be considered vintage on Etsy. So that's the only reason I would have to put that on eBay. Not my first choice. I put things on Etsy when I can. The last thing that I got is actually just this little table here. I paid $8 for it. It has this imitation leather, kind of leatherette, whatever on top of it. It's just a great booth item. So, ooh, there's cobwebs. So this is something that I would stick in my booth for $20, $25, and I don't have, I would not have a problem selling it. Just a nice little side table. But that's the extent of the haul. I, I did pretty well, I think. I, I'll do great with the silver, with the flatware. I'll do great with the, the paintings, hopefully. And yeah, other than that, that's all I've got. So thanks for watching and don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Bye-bye.